if there's anything that Tunisia is famous for, it's this red sheshia. It's a handmade hat, very popular. You will see a lot of uh, older men wearing them all around the Tunisia. And it's uh, also worn in uh, occasions, weddings, religious holidays and celebrations. Predominantly worn by men, but uh, now in modern Tunisia, you also see some women wearing them. So I thought I'd get myself one. And you can see it's super high quality, all handmade. And it's supposed to just sit. You don't smoosh it, like you don't push it. It just sits like this. So cute. I certainly see myself wearing it for uh, winter here in San Francisco. But I got three. Oh my gosh, three of them. And uh, I got mine from uh, Tunis, the capital. Um, in the old Medina of Tunis, this is uh, the place that one of my Tunisian friends uh, recommended. Inside the old Medina of Tunis, there's a popular mosque called uh, Hamoud Abesha. And next to Hamoud Abesha, there are uh, a couple of uh, shops run by uh, older men. They've been in business for so many years. I was recommended this one. Muhammad bin Yusuf. Uh, in this box, they have their address right here, phone number and WhatsApp. Uh, let me know if you want uh, more details. I can add that in, uh, in the comments, but I got myself three of them. I think I'm gonna keep this one for the rest of the video. It looks cute. I got this uh, dress for myself. This is also very unique and uh, special to uh, Tunisia. This is for women. Um, usually, uh, as I was told, Tunisian women would uh, either wear this uh, at home or they would wear it for hammam. Uh, in Tunisia, uh, there is a bridal shower or bridal hammam before the wedding where uh, the bride with her friends and family would go to the hammam. Uh, they have a certain ritual and celebration between women and usually uh, the bride and her friends and family would wear something like this, but mostly her friends. So this is a really nice color. You will see them all around the all around the old Medina, so they're really easy to find. Always check uh, the material to make sure it's of good quality. I got one for myself and then I got another one, purple, for my friend. I'm gonna be doing matchy matchy. My next purchase are uh, these uh, sweets and dates from uh, Gourmandise. Gourmandise is a high-end uh, patisserie place in uh, Tunis. You will find a bunch of locations around the city of Tunis. I'm not sure about the rest of Tunisia. If you know, let me know in the comments. But a friend of mine, a Tunisian friend of mine, uh, took me there and showed me around and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get stuff from this. Uh, this is a variety of uh, sweets made of dates. I haven't opened it yet, but this is like, it looks like a strawberry. All of them are probably uh, used in a base of uh, almond flour or dates. Dates are pretty popular in Tunisia, especially if you go to the south, you go to Duz and you go to Tozer, high quality dates. Uh, in particular, a variety called Degla, Deglat Noor. Deglat Noor is the popular variety of dates uh, in Tunisia. I unfortunately didn't buy any dates this time just because I was uh, with my group. Uh, by the way, this second visit of mine to Tunisia was to lead my uh, first group trip in Tunisia, which was incredible. It exceeded everyone's expectation. We had so much fun. Uh, you can check uh, my next year's tours on travel with trekkingpals.com. We are going to Tunisia another time and I would love for you to join us if it's something you're interested in. I didn't get dates because I was just busy helping everyone get dates and I totally forgot. I thought I'm gonna go back to the shop and get them, but it didn't happen. But anyway, so I got this one and then the second one, it didn't keep uh, really well with the flying. It was in my carry-on. Uh, these are some stuffed dates. They stuffed them with the... Uh, almond paste and they decorate them with either all type of nuts like here I can see pistachio, walnuts, almonds, they're really really good. So all of these from uh, Gourmandise and it also has a really nice location in uh, uh, Tunis in the capital, a place called Lac, Lac One, Lac One or Lac Zero, I think it's Lac One and they have this beautiful uh, seating area facing the water, the lake of Tunis, and you can see the mountain from there. I had some coffee there. I tried some of their uh, uh, patisserie. So tasty, super high quality. The price is a little bit elevated compared to other places or other shops around uh, Tunisia, around Tunis, the capital, but I think it's uh, totally worth it. How's my hat doing? I got a uh, long, Gandura for Alex. I'm not sure what it's called in Tunisia. You guys let me know in the comments. But in Morocco, we call it Gandura. Just long, traditional dress for men. 
So you can uh, wear it to just lounge around the house or if you're going to the mosque, uh, Friday you could wear it in the streets. Uh, it's really nice, super high quality. Alex loves blue, it's his favorite color, so he's very happy with it. And it also goes well with the, his shashia. I wanna show you this, but I don't think it's in the best state. This is a uh, makrut. Makrut is a very popular sweet uh, in uh, Tunisia. You will find it all around the country, but the best place to get makrut in Tunisia is the city of Kairawan. The makrut of Kairawan is so special. The taste is very unique. I can tell the difference when I had it the first time and the second time. So when I was in Kairawan with the group, I bought uh, a box and I packed it. I was scared of opening it, but I also want to show you what it looks like. So let's do it. You can buy makrut if you don't travel to Kairawan, it's okay, it's, it's really good, even in the capital of Tunis. When you're walking around the old Medina of Tunis, a lot of vendors will even give you a piece or two just to try, and if you like it, you can purchase it. I don't know how to describe to you the location in Kairawan, uh, but it's technically uh, inside the old Medina of Kairawan, like when you enter from the main door of the old Medina, it's to the left, and then the shop is the shop is not on the main drag, like it's inside. I don't know how to describe very well, but I will try to find the location on Google Map and then leave it for you. The guy at the shop did a, a good job. I think he did the, his best to pack it, but by the end of the day, it's a sweet that's a little too, uh, too oily. Oh, look at this. Uh, I love the packaging, El Qairawan, the city. Uh, some people call it the fourth holiest city in Islam. Um, it is home to the popular mosque of Uqba ibn Nafi and it's uh, the capital of the Aglabites. These are people who ruled the area. They are the, from the, they are associated with the Abbasid. They ruled the, the area for quite some time. Okay, this is not in the best state. Oh, I'm a little bit bummed because I wanted to keep it for uh, Ramadan. But it's okay, I'm sure it's edible. This is what a makrota, this one, this one looks okay. This is what it looks like. Uh, the outside is made of uh, semolina mixed with uh, some spices and the filling is uh, dates with nuts. So it could be almonds or pistachio or things like that. Um, really, really delicious. Oh, this is the traditional one. This is how a traditional makrota looks like. You see the outside is semolina and inside are dates especially when they do use dates from the south. Oh my gosh, best taste. And this is uh, an assortment of a bunch of them. This is the traditional one. This one is made of, uh, I think, uh, sesame seeds mixed with other nuts. I haven't tried this one yet. Mm. Almonds, so good. I, next up, I got a bunch of loofahs for friends and you know, family. Uh, this is a loofah that I used first time when I went uh, for a hammam in uh, Tunis, the capital. This is what they used and I found it to be incredibly soft. And usually, you know, with these uh, loofahs, you, you use them to exfoliate and remove the dead skin from your body. Uh, the traditional hammam in uh, Tunisia is very similar to Morocco. So you go in, you go to the steam room and they apply black soap all over your body and then you wait a little bit, rinse it off and then you use a loofah like this to exfoliate. Uh, the one we use in Morocco is black and it's a little bit rough but this one is super super soft so since then I've been buying a bunch of them for the rest of the year. Um, I also bought another dress for me. The first time I uh, was in Tunisia back in 2023 I was backpacking around the world, so I didn't have the luxury of space and I saw so many things that I fell in love with but I couldn't buy because I only had one backpack. Um, I love this color. It is a short sleeve but also it's, got, it's showing some skin here which I think will be really nice. And then you can adjust it, which I love very much. Okay, so this is pretty interesting. This is called the Bsisa in uh, Tunisia. Uh, even in some of the hotels and the guest houses where we stayed, they would serve it in the morning. And it's basically um, a mixture of some uh, grains and nuts. And uh, it comes uh, in the form of a powder and then they mix it with either uh, oil, olive oil or vegetables oil or water. So it depends on uh, which one you're using. So this Bsisa, for example, is made of uh, lentils, chickpeas, sesame, uh, nuts, almonds, bunch of other spices. This one, also chickpeas, sesame, grain, uh, wheat, 
uh, almonds. Um, here are all of the ingredients right here. I'm going to list them if you are curious. But basically, like I said, you either mix it with the uh, oil or with water and then you just serve it like that for breakfast. You can mix some of it and then just prepare one serving. But actually when I was talking to the lady, um, when I was talking to the vendor, she told me that I should mix the whole thing in one go and then just keep it outside. You don't have to put it in the fridge, which I thought is interesting. So just keep it outside and then have a spoon or two for breakfast. And usually you would just have, uh, you know, you consume it either with a spoon or with some bread, with the, either coffee or latte or whatever. So I'm excited to try. I will let you guys know how it goes. This is my favorite thing to get in Tunisia. These are uh, essential oils or extracts of uh, jasmine. Jasmine is the national flower in uh, Tunisia. When you're walking around the streets, you will smell jasmine. There are jasmine flowers all over the place. And so um, in Tunis, the capital, they extract uh, all of these perfumes. They, when they sell them, they advertise them as perfumes. No alcohol, it's just pure extracts from jasmine flowers, and some of them uh, use other type of flowers. But uh, uh, Tunis is known for exporting all of these to a city called Grasse in south of France, which is known for high-end uh, perfumes. Uh, so I was able to buy La Vie Belle, this is exactly the one that they send to Gras and then they add alcohol and process it to sell La Vie Belle as a perfume as we know it. But the smell is absolutely amazing. No alcohol. This is very pure. Uh, when I was buying them, they even did the test where they try to use fire and lighter. Uh, it doesn't catch, so that shows you that it doesn't have any alcohol. I bought La Vie Belle and I bought a bunch of jasmine. This one is called the uh, Carthage. It's a mixture of uh, so many other flowers. And then I also got uh, Sauvage by Dior for uh, Alex, it's for men. Oh my gosh, the taste of jasmine is absolutely incredible. And Tunis, the capital, is the right place to buy them. You just have to be careful which shops you can trust. I'm gonna share the one where uh, I bought mine from. Uh, the guys are pretty trustworthy, uh, reasonable prices, and really, really high quality. Oh, this smell is absolutely incredible. Okay, I also bought these just for fun. We have them in Morocco as well. This is the Magic Lipstick of North uh, Africa. So you apply it, it's green, it looks green, but this is not the real color. It kind of takes the color of your skin to come up with something with a color that's a bit more pinkish, kind of leaning towards red, really dependent on your uh, lip color. Uh, we loved this when we were kids. We were always surprised. Oh my gosh, it's green. It's the green lipstick. So I got a bunch of them just for fun. Um, I got some uh, nougats from uh, the city of uh, Tunis, from the old Medina. So many vendors, you can buy as much as you want. And then... Uh, this is a nice discovery. When I was staying in La Marsa, I found a place called the Maison de Senteur. And they also have another location in the old Medina of uh, Tunis next to Zaytuna Mosque. Uh, this is a really nice place where you can buy some perfumes, you can buy some soaps. So, of course, I got myself a bunch of uh, jasmine products. This is jasmine soap. It smells incredible and the the location at la marsa i found the prices to be really reasonable for gifts uh, even when i was preparing gift packages for uh, my group trip i got them some gifts from there they have perfumes also uh, but i just bought myself some uh, hand creams made of uh, macadamia and uh, jasmine and the soaps the soaps are incredible so that's the place maison de Santeur. they have a bunch of locations already Okay, I'm excited for these t-shirts because I saw them the first time I was in Tunisia and I didn't buy them and I was a little bit upset about it, but yay, it's happening. This is a guy with the moustache, glasses and the Tunisian shashia. So perfect. Not only that, but I got a lady one. Ta-da! <laughs> Which one do you guys uh, like better? I like this first one for the mustache, but then I like this one for the eyelashes. So cute. And when I was trying to buy them, I was very particular about the color I wanted. Some of them are actually red, like lighter red, uh, but I wanted the dark red to match the, the Cheshire. So I was really happy when I found them. Okay, what else? Wow, still have a few things. I have... 
a replica of El Jem, the third largest amphitheater in the world. Uh, this was my second time visiting it and it was incredible. I've been to the Colosseum of Rome and El Jem in Tunisia. This one is so much better. But I I'm going to tell you quickly the story why I have this, even though I didn't care much about having a replica. But when uh, we were in El Jem, there was a Tunisian policeman who kind of saw our group and tagged along and stayed with us the whole time. Um, I asked our guide if we had to be escorted, even though I knew we didn't have to have an escort, but he just decided to stick around and stay with us and keep us company. And he was taking pictures of everyone and just being super, super friendly, you know, just because. And uh, he literally was even like stopping traffic to help us take pictures with the with the gem in the background, which was really nice. Uh, but at the end, I thought to myself, you know, the guy's been spending like the whole Couple, like two hours at least with us I'm gonna give him some some tip why not so I hand him um, a certain amount of money and he refused he refused so I kept insisting this is like I'm not taking notes and answer you take it and then he took it from me <laughs> forcefully I felt like and we said bye okay thank you so much and after five minutes or so he just came back and found our van and he bought me this he was like oh this is your gift and I was really really touched. Uh, people in Tunisia are extremely kind and this is not, many, many things like this happen to me, just people showing uh, generosity and kindness and being so welcome into this, their country and this is one of the reasons why I fell in love with Tunisia. So I will keep this, this means something to me. This was also a nice little gift from a lady from Matmata. So I'm gonna keep it. And I bought a bunch of these. Um, I used to buy them as a kid when I lived in Morocco, so I was happy to see them in Tunisia as well. It's uh, peanuts coated with uh, caramelized in uh, sugar. They taste really, really good. Pretty cheap. And I got some uh, self-care product. This is uh, green clay. Green clay, the scent of rose and geranium, natural 100% and Tunisian 100% artisanal product. So this is uh, clay. Um, when I went for hammam this time in Tunisia, they applied it all over my uh, body after exfoliating and it felt really, really nice, especially on, uh, on my face. So I thought I'm going to get myself some. It's mixed with the uh, rose water. And then I bought this uh, lightning mask with rose. And what is this? Lightning mask with honey. I'm not sure if it's clay. No, it's not. It's like white, uh, white cream with honey. It smells really good. We'll try all of these and hope for the best. Ah, oh, this smells really good. It smells like rose water. I bought myself some gold in Tunisia, which I was very happy with. This was my gift in Tunisia after a successful first group trip. I love gold. I, I mean, this obsession of buying gold kind of just started two years ago or so, and it's still ongoing, but I got myself this uh, ring with the bracelet. This is the flag of Tunisia something that I do every now and then, just when I travel to new countries. Um, ring and bracelet uh, go really well together, which was not planned. Um, just to kind of give you some idea about how to buy gold in Tunisia, I bought mine from uh, the old Medina of Tunis. There are um, a couple of streets inside the old Medina of Tunis with a lot of uh, gold vendors. They specialize just in gold. And the way it works, um, you would want to, if you're interested in buying gold in Tunisia, you would want to shop around and ask about the price of gold per gram for that particular day because it changes every every other day. Uh, you would ask and shop around. Uh, when you are a foreigner, I mean, you have to be a little extra careful if you know a local that, that can go with you, that would be best. Uh, if you don't, you just shop around and go from one shop to another, ask at least like five, six to understand what is the price of the gram without even specifying what you want. Just get a general idea about the price of the gold for that particular day and then try to compare it to the price of gold uh, online universally because it should be pretty comparable. Uh, if you buy gold that's not like that doesn't have any stones or no particular sophisticated designs, uh, most likely they will stick to the uh, price per gram. Uh, they will weigh how many grams, for example, like this is what they did with my ring and the bracelet. They weighed them together. This is how many grams. Uh, this is the price per gram. This is what you pay. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. You just have to make sure that the, what they are coaching you 
for the price of gram is uh, is accurate and they're not uh, inflating the price. Uh, when you do that, uh, they are going to give you a receipt, which is very important to keep with you because in the future, should you want to sell this gold for one reason or the other, or even if you are asked if this is you own this as a piece of jewelry because gold is not cheap, you want to have proof of it. So they will give you a receipt. The receipt will have your first and last name and uh, they will have uh, details on how many, how many grams of gold and then the price and uh, you can keep that receipt with you. Uh, you are able to pay either in cash or by card, but there will be an additional fee of between 3% to 6% uh, charge if you are using your credit card. Sometimes you can negotiate with the shop to say, hey, like we split the cost. You pay 3%, I pay 3%, something like that. But uh, it is very important to find a shop where that you, that you trust with the honest people. You can ask around and uh, make sure that you work with someone uh, who you trust. This is pretty important. Um, if you want a recommendation, you send me a message or contact me, I will be happy to share that. Uh, but yeah, so this was my, uh, I think, like most expensive purchase this trip in the Tunisia, which I'm very happy with. Well, this is pretty much everything that I got from Tunisia. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and share with me in the comments. Is Tunisia a country that you're curious about? Have you traveled in Tunisia? And uh, what would you like to know about this wonderful country? I'll see you soon in another video.